Welcome back, everybody. We are moving into our second series of the day. Another best of three on the cards. I'm excited for this one. I'm sure you are, Waga, because we've got complexity exactly. heading into the draft of... And VGJ Thunder, who just did win Galaxy Battle. So, uh, obviously, yeah. two teams that will really enjoy watch uh, going up against each other here. We did watch complexity yesterday. As they, uh, you know, struggled a little bit, should say at first, mm -hmm. but then they uh, came back and played some solid Dota later on as well. And what, did, what did we have? We had a 37 minute victory, which was like back and forth against Planet Dog, it felt like, and then game number two, 21 and a half minutes was kind of just over. You know? Yeah, they, they, uh, what I said towards the end of the day was that they played the heroes that they had in a very smart way. They laned it very well. Kyle played Undying and babysat, basically, and he's probably going to be uh, the one playing Tusk in this game, potentially. Just babysitting um, the two Swedish carries, you know, on this team in a very yeah. good way. They managed to even get farm and a Lycan in a lane against Razor. But let's not focus on the past too much here as we move into the drafts. VGJ Thunder, respect a lot here, banning out the Enchantress and the Chen. Uh, definitely don't want to go up against any of those. And meanwhile, they snag up some hard pushers themselves. Oh man, it starts, it begins with this Lycan Shadow Shaman already picked up. The Doge oh, is boy, here. Oh boy, oh boy. That's, that's, that's really spooky, honestly, when you see those two heroes first phased. Uh, how, how, it, how do you deal with this kind of push? It speaks with intent when you pick Lycan and Shadow Shaman that early. So uh, we'll, we'll see the way that they want to deal with this. The first and most important thing when going up against a Lycan is to actually secure that you have stable lanes, right? Some people overreact in thinking, okay, we need to have heroes that deal with the, the summons in a good way when he has Necrobook. Well, the ideal scenario is to delay that Necrobook a little bit, right? To actually have lanes that can contest in a certain way. So we'll see how they're going to set themselves up for that. They have Tusk and Peel. Peel is quite strong against Lycan later on, just by virtue of having so many of him and, and Lycan not having any form of AoE, really. Mm. Oh, I like that ban by uh, VGJ Thunder, a hero that I've been playing against Lycan players quite a bit, actually. The Underlord, super good. So you've got a bit of wave clear for later on, like you're saying, but it's, early on he's not It's not pressure, really about right? that. Yeah, it's about the pressure in the lane. So he has the ability to actually deny against Lycan, which is not that easy for an offlaner to do. He is also super tanky. If the Lycan ever commits on him, you just fight back with a Thunderstorm or a Firestorm. And you don't really care too much if you happen to die once. You're probably going to have gone a good trade out of it. And if you do start getting a lot of nice and presence on the lane, your damage actually scales up so much... With a few points in the E as well, you take away all of Lycan's damage. In yeah. the mid-game, that reduces his damage by so such a big margin, you know. And, and obviously the root is not bad against him. That's pretty nice all around. Uh, what are we looking at? Legion ban from Complexity. That's, that's an interesting one for me. A Legion ban in the second phase. Uh, is that indicative of, you know, some kind of Batrider or something like that coming out? That, that single target focus is okay against PL. Overwhelming odds, pretty good against clearing illusions. It is but... possible that they want to play that. Mu is definitely more than capable of playing Batrider. That's a hero that I've seen him play so many times. But it could also just be that they don't want to uh, have something that's strong against PL, like you said. The... The poor illusions, they die and then you get dueled. And that's when Rasta has an easy time following up with a hex, even if you don't kill that's him immediately true. during the duel. Because it can be hard for Rasta to hex up the PL if he doesn't get the right one spotted. And here we see Undying picked up by VGJ Thunder. Uh, Looks like one of your drafts, Waga. <laughs> it, it, oh my god, that's actually... They're actually picking what we picked in the qualifier finals, huh? <laughs> This is identical oh, to what Hovite drafted. Yeah, Lycan, Rasta, Undying. So basically, this is not fun to play against because there's so many things that you need to kill. The Rasta Ward's going down, the Tombstone going down. That's already a lot. You basically need to relocate out of that fight or, you know, I don't know how to, you, how to say <laughs> that you should fight. And then on top of that, you have Lycan with his Wolves, the Summons, the Helm of Dominator, yeah. uh, and Necrobook. There's so many things going to be in the way. So with, with some of these elements, you know, we, we've seen, for instance, a Gyrocopter against you know, a Lycan or an Undying to try and clear the Summons. Some way to deal with Tombstone, a bit of magic damage, that kind of you know, a mix of mix of damage types is pretty nice. But when you've got so many of these things, do you start thinking about maybe not directly interacting with all of these things and maybe playing uh, around it? You know, maybe look for some push of your own, try and mirror your opponents and look for, you know, trade-offs on towers? So, or, or do you want to try and, you know, just face off against it? 
I, I would say that you shouldn't really try and trade off the towers, um, but what you should be doing is try to split up the enemy a little bit, and if you do force them to split up, that's when you want to take your engagement. You don't want to fight into the full five men that is going to be VGJ Thunder's lineup, because look at this, they're picking a tide now, adding more team fights to the mix. They have tons of sustain with the soul, uh, soul rip from Undying, along with Lycan just healing so much himself. Um, with the W especially, they can they can be so hard to bring down. I think complexity, they really need to think hard about the next pick here, because they need some heroes that can they can deal with the early game of uh, Thunder here. Thunder. Thunder! Uh, Undying, though, it's a smart pick when you have this sort of setup as well. It wins lanes for you, so in that sense, it's really good with Lycan, because, like I've said before, the counter is to, to have strong lanes against him. That's a smart pick. That's very good. There is the gyro. Mm -hmm. Very good to be able to flack off the uh, tombstone, of course. One of the big things. But also just has so much wave clear when Lycan finally does push high ground in mid-game or, you know, perhaps in the early game. Depends how the early game goes. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he's one of those heroes that technically can go mid. So the PL gyro duality, you know, they could shift uh, back and forth. Limp was one of the biggest proponents of that mid-gyro build with the homing missiles. But I, I, I don't know. I feel like I expect the gyro safe lane and maybe the PL mid. But I, I do like that mix of magic, uh, mix of damage types, right? The magic early and then the scale into physical for the gyro is really nice. That's something we could see, but I'm sort of feeling that this could be an aggressive lane by complexity. I don't think they want to just sit back and let the Lycan farm because he's going to get his Helm of Dominator very early. Hmm. They haven't shown their off lane intended hero though, so hard to say for sure. But I think that Gyrocopter along with uh, Tuscan Witch Doctor could easily go to top. Same for PL actually, if they want to put the gyro somewhere else comes down to them. Five um, and Brewmaster gets removed here by VG as they uh, fear that yeah. Brewmaster lift. Very good against the uh, Lycan. Just spam lift him over and over. Good way as well to deal with the Rasta as you have really good disables. Some people think Rasta is a hard counter to Brewmaster. I kind of see it the other way around that it's really tough to be a Rasta. You're so slow. If the Brewmaster ever gets his split off, you're basically just dead. Yeah, like if you don't hex him, you're done. Right? Yeah, and then he, has, then he has the fact that he splits, so he has three different units for killing the, the Rasta, tra Rasta mm -hmm. wards as well. So that's a really... I guess they can counter each other in a way, but more often than not, I see Brewmaster coming out on top. So final picks here. I'm looking at VGJ Thunder, and I'm like, DK is a hero that just comes to mind. Maybe doesn't fit with them perfectly, but it just like adds in push. I think it does. Good, th good kind of laner. I think it does because they would add some wave clear against uh, against creep wave shoving, but also add some extra um, ways to deal with PL. That breathe fire is really good against him. Well, the quick stun as well. Yeah, and it would just be a uh, oh. I don't know what to call it. terrifying lineup to Obnoxious go against. Just pushing. In terms of pushing, your towers are just going to melt if they go for that. Timbersaw gets picked up, maybe even anticipating the DK yeah. pick. It feels like, to me... See, I, I was wondering about the OD, but then you, you're, you're blind picking an OD into a matchup, not really where you want to be, so and, I, I, I and, do kind of like the Timber. And finally, I want to say that Timbersaw... I mean, this is one of the biggest comfort picks in uh, in Dota, pretty much. Mu on Timbersaw, yeah. he is extremely um, comfortable on playing this hero. He is played it at, he has played a TI. You know, when they managed to get all the way to the finals, he played extremely well on it. So um, we'll see how it works. Timber hasn't had the highest success rate in this patch. Actually, mm. it hasn't been uh, uh, working out so well. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe Spirit Vessel is a big part of why. Yeah, um, it definitely feels that since way. Since it hard counters him quite hard. Well, we see the Tinker. I thought OD could have been a nice hero as well, but the Tinker is is for sure going to work in this lineup. Again, works good against the PL. You managed to clear, uh, clear all the illusions really quick. There's very little catch. Yeah, there's no, not many scout. heroes... Not many heroes that can get on him, really. The I guess if you get a rocket on him and then snowball mm. after him somehow. But then the problem is Kyle is that five-roll tusk, right? Mm. Yeah, and it's... Maybe gets more items this game, just the fact that Z-Freak no. is the Witch Doctor? No. no? You no. think? Okay. Z-Freak meets Glimmer, just Glimmer Rush. Agonim's oh, Ag oh, yeah, yes. okay, Agonim Scepter. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Come on, you know how it works. This, this, that's, that's very true. That's this very brotherhood true. has decided. Uh, it's a one-way street. Yeah, Kyle, you're by words. But yeah, Tinker against Timbersaw. Uh, it doesn't feel good to be a Timber in this game. No, for sure not. But I mean, at least they have uh, a decent clear now against the Wolves as well, because you have pure damage from the Timber Chain and the the Chakram. So that's a nice thing, because else it can be hard to bring down the Wolves. 
I really love this cosmetic set, by the way, on Lycan. It looks, looks so fancy. It's so shiny. Hey, what are those blades? I, w I want to click on Silo and see what he's up to. They're dangerous, man. They are sharp and dangerous, just like Silo himself. Into game we go. And you, you were talking about uh, player to hero matchups. Silo and Lycan's a pretty good one, you know. There's Lone Druid, of course, there's Anti Mage, but Ly true. Lycan is definitely up there. That's true. A, a player who actually enjoyed the hero a lot even before this patch made it super popular. Yeah. I, mean, I, I can remember back to like Frankfurt Major when Lycan just wasn't a hero and you still had Silo picking Lycan. It's like, I can make this work, <laughs> I promise. Didn't do it. He already queued up his uh, Helm of Dominator, you know, so he knows where he's gonna get before even buying boots or anything. It's gonna be the Helm of Dominator, ideally. So it's the Blood Moon set. Yeah, the Blood Moon set entirely is what he has. And uh, I like the Necro book that it has. I remember when oh, this yeah. was added because he has a Necro book on his hip, which uh, is a Necro 3, you know. Nice stuff. Oh, stop moving. Silo. I think it's a really well detailed hey. set, to be honest. Hey. It's worthy of some attention. That's really sick. Um, all right. Is so. it expensive though? That's, that's uh, the question. I don't think it's that expensive, actually. I don't. Yeah, I'm writing this down for later purchase. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So we see complexity moving down, getting uh, a ward down that blocks the small camp on the bottom. They are going to be running aggressive, it seems, with a PL. At least he's down here for now. He might swing in to mid and they're off laning the timber. Yeah, that's probably more like it. Yeah, Limp's been pulled a couple of tangos there. Yeah, he's going to be heading down the mid. So Undying is blocking mid for the Tinker. And it looks like the off lane Lycan is going to be going up against, uh, you know, Chessie on the safe lane here. Cool. Of course, this is going to kind of move what is the safe lane here for Radiant as they're going to protect the Lycan, of course. But uh, I don't think that that's a, a really good matchup because Chessie, Jarecopter has 45 damage. 45 damage is a lot less than, you know, the 63 that is Lycan. Oh, wow. Or uh, 73, sorry. <clears throat> and 73 before the Quelling Blade damage. But actually, Lycan's middle. they're moving it around. Yeah. Yeah. So Silar up against Limp here. Stout Quelling on the Lycan. Supposed to see even better for uh, Vici Gaming. Pretty smart change, actually. That's, that's pretty cool. So Tinker top with the Shadow Shaman fades up here to try and deal with Chessie. Chessie, let's see, getting a last hit in this lane is not going to be the easiest. They will bring Kyle up as well as Z Freak, but nope, the Witch Doctor the already dropping low. They TP Tinker down to bottom. Yeah, they don't want to have tied against Timber, so this was not the matchup that they intended for, I think. I'm not quite sure if the lane swaps were the way they wanted there. But Mu gonna get forced away here. Did get level two though before having to back. And, and this uh, this mid lane is kind of being left alone now, where I think that PO should really struggle against the Lycan. It's not the easiest matchup. Surprised he killed the dogs this early, by the way. Level well, yeah, level one wolves is something that we like, never see cast. It's one of those spells that really isn't valuable, but well, Silas it, making it work out here. It's just more that the Howl is valuable in every single lane, so you can help out everyone a little bit. Just one point in Howl and uh, two points in Feral Impulse and then maxing Wolves is the typical build. But going away from that a little bit, he does go for a two points in Feral Impulse though. So, so valuable. So Complexity were uh, you know, happy with the Timber versus Tide matchup. Well, what's the reason here that Mu hasn't TP top to try and get the matchup again? Is it just the fact that Complexity can't swing three heroes bottom? Well, yeah, you don't really want to TP up there because you already TP'd your supports up there, I would say is the big reason. So Kyle would have no way of getting down bottom, and you don't really want to try lane with your timber saw. It's a little bit awkward. So they're going to finally be happy with just having an off lane timber, but he's going to be uh, a little bit in trouble here. Shackle coming in, but he has quite a bit of armor. Oh. He does go down, though. Yeah, Mango popped, Fade, there's a big ether shock damage there. 1-1 one, one across the Tinker as well, nice yeah, Rasta, little pick up. Rasta has a ton of damage on level 2 already, you oh, know. Top lane, shards come out, they've caught the tide here, and a nice little snowball will extend this fight for a little while as Ayo zombie dying. Double damage, kills off the tusk, nicely done. Now I turns never scared. fights up against Jesse. There's under that is undying just doesn't care. He's like, I'm level one, you're two guys, level two and three. Alright, I'll take you on. <laughs> I'm going. Decay is one hell of a spell. It definitely is. It most certainly is. So now they're kind of moving PL down bottom. I think they're switching entirely here, yeah. And, uh, of course, Timbersaw against the Lycan is definitely what they wanted to have from the get-go. But VGJ Thunder have been juking a little bit with the lanes. 
And uh, so far, they're coming out on top. Tidehunter is struggling, yes, but the other two cores are having a fantastic game. Both Tinker and Lycan. Tinkler, uh, Tinkler, Tinker, Tinker, <laughs> Tinkler. <laughs> He's gonna get a load of damage oh, onto wow. lamp. Down he goes. The with save a... not in time there. <laughs> Kyle wishes he had boots to save limp right yeah, there. That's unfortunate. Two in the laser and the rocket. Tons of magic damage coming out of the Tinker now. I was just looking at him. He's got, you know, one circlet. I, I don't know if he's thinking about, you know, buying a null at this point, but Sol Ring will definitely be coming on this side lane Tinker for the march coming out yeah, in for just sure. a little while. But, uh, yeah, we, we don't see safe lane Tinker too often. It, it really has all been about that mid Tinker with the bottle, the Sol Ring. If, Get you, if you think about it, though, in this current patch, we see a lot of lane switching, getting ideal lanes as people... Oh, are they going to kill Kyle? I don't think so. Oh, they are. Maybe. Doing laser. Zap him down. Nicely done. Fade getting chased by Limp with a doppelganger forward. Maybe Limp can get this with another Lance that's coming off cooldown now. Fade juking across yes, the, the trees. Magic wand. He's got the vision now. Limp chases forward. Fade, you're right, has the stick charges to keep on going. <laughs> Tinker's like, I'm, I'm just going to go for some runes. I'll see you later, buddy. Oh, what? You want lasers? No, I'm sorry. Limp expended his entire mana pool and all of his one charges for that. He did. But he did get to cancel on Tinker's Clarity. That was just popped as well. So, always something. And um, I, I wanted to go back and say that the reason we see Tinker safe lane here uh, is because switching lanes and getting ideal lane scenario has really been a focal point of this patch for almost every single team. So that's why teams are more happy to react and change lanes. Also has a little bit to do with that everyone starts for a, with a TP for free. Yeah. So everyone is more willing to change lanes when you don't have to pay for it. Yeah, now it's like, oh, I'll just switch lanes, guys. Come on. Yeah, Let's get exactly. that TP going. Let's try and start things off on the Tinker with a Lance into Shards. He's thinking about the March, but 15 one charges Got should be seconds. able to keep him alive. Second They're Lance. diving in really deep here. Another Lance, but March and Laser will be able to keep the Tinker alive, it looks like. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. Man, looking over to mid lane, even after they put the Timber Saw mid, not oh. the easiest thing. Oh, top. oh wow. They're yeah. going to get the zombie. I've got the Undying down. Z Freak with a nice big Maledict there. Level 2 already. Ayo, feeling the burn, but yeah, back to mid lane. What's happening here is just that Silor has so much damage, he can't even, you know, deny quite reliably against Mu. He's level 6 against level 4 on this mid matchup. Of course, Mu did have to move around a little bit more, as we see. Actually, a kill on Rasta there. The dives happening here. They're moving the Tinker mid now. It looks like Lycan... We're he's, relocating. He's got enough out of the lane. He's like, okay, Tinker, I've got my helm. I can jungle. I can go bot lane. I can go wherever you want me to. Just you go mid and have a happy time up against Moo's Timber Saw. That's true. He does a fantastic timing on the Helm of Dominator. So just putting him jungle and trying to have Tinker mid and then jung um, leave the safe lane a little bit for someone who wants experience. Hopefully, though, they don't get dove by this tusk. Now, Kyle, looking pretty low on the old HP mana will back away as Fade gets, like you said, a bit of a bit of face time with the creeps on bottom lane, get closer to that level six while Sylar shifts through the jungle, not not wasting any time or uh, being inefficient or anything like that. Farming jungle on his way oh, through down ulti. towards bottom as he does pop that shapeshift chase. That's pretty aggressive. In onto Kyle. He's got a snowball. Try and buy some time here. Baited out by Sylar as the chase continues, but in comes Z Freak, not enough. And that cask will bounce, but I'm not even Tusk is quite dead. sure that I would say that's worth it. They committed the the Lycan ulti to kill a low man out Tusk. Like he's already respawning. Now you don't have a Lycan ulti. If you kept it, maybe you could do some pushing. But at least he got the kill. He's like, I showed myself on lane now, guys. I'll go back to the jungle. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true that he just wants to jungle primarily. So using your ulti and then going back to jungling is is definitely ideal. It's just that the kill he got was pretty much the yeah. the least meaningful kill ever. Well, Complexity still trying to kind of equalize up these lanes. Phantom Lancer is back into mid up against the Tinker, but with Tidehunter here, Yang continually dragging these waves across, looking for that experience that he needs. Oh, bottom lane, they get the kill. Mu takes a tumble down there. Yeah, Rasta got him with a shackle and held him down. It's so much damage as well. Even a Timbersaw can be quite easy to kill when you have the decay. That's the thing. That's not really damage, just takes away your max HP, right? So. Mm. Very easy to bring down Timber when he doesn't have enough HP to sustain. And of course, the magical damage from the uh, Hellbear Smasher. Clapping not, on people. Uh, not to be underestimated. 150 damage can, can make a difference. 
full treads now for Silar as well. What's he at? Closing in on 4k net worth. He has monstrous level of farm. This is the kind of thing that, you know, scares people when you see a Lycan with this much. Gyro and PL don't look too bad, and if they're able to get this kill onto Yang, then Which, things yeah, will look even better. Yeah, they should be getting him. Chessy, the call down, will secure it, but has to TP away with no stun from VGG. Thunder. Kyle wants the money from the tombstone, and we're going to see a deny. Oh. No deny. He gets the tombstone, 125 gold. He's going to die to the Tinker here more likely than not, though, yeah. with the laser rockets. It should be going down. Okay, they have TP. Maybe he can get out. There's no mana here on the... Yeah, he could, he could actually TP. Yeah, I'm dying. Oh my god, Kyle's away. They got completely duped. <laughs> wow. He's, he's giving it the old fist, bu uh, fist pump there, I'm <laughs> sure, in the, in the player sure. booth. Mid lane, Sila, ulti through, limp TPs away, and yet again, no disables here from VGJ Thunder. That's one of their weaknesses, right? That only Rasta is the one who's able to cancel TPs in the early game. Rasta and Ravage are their stuns. Exactly, when when you gotta commit Ravage, but he's not level 5 yet, or level 6 yet. Only level 5. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Hits level 6 right there. Yeah, now so we got Ravage it. now up for the tide. Ready for TP cancelling yes. on the poor tusks. <laughs> Ready to TP cancel. <laughs> Snowball in onto Silar. This is aggressive from Complexity. They know his ulti's down, but he's so tanky. He's healed up by the Soul Ripper Veo, and now they turn back to try and deal with move, but lacking a bit of damage there, and definitely don't want to keep committing in for that fight, even bringing the Tinker into this little battle mid lane. Very nice to have the Soul Rip coming out there. Even a level 1 Soul Rip, it still heals so much, and he's able to just run back, jungle up a little bit safely here on the on the Lycan again, getting so much farm while leaving the lanes for his team. However, of course, they did lose the, the tier 1 bottom, yeah. but there is a lot of experience coming in there. They need to send someone down there to take it. Not sure who's going to be yet. Uh, especially when there's Soul Rip, there's going to be Helm Creeps and Lycan Wolves and Necro Units. All this heal is going to come in. They just spot it. Very They're handy. pinging it with Rasta. They're like, take it. And Kyle, he realizes he's going to mess with a Tinker. He might keep him away from the lane for a little bit. No. Oh, <laughs> oh he, tried. <laughs> he tried. He tried to cut off the path. Almost. Well, well tried. But yeah, Sila feels like after the free farm he had mid lane, he's kind of been struggling to find a home. He's going from jungle bit, to lane, from jungle to lane, but... He's, it, a, he's a vagrant by choice, I would say. Yeah, he, it doesn't feel like he's been forced into this position, but he's giving the rest of his team opportunities to farm themselves. Surprised he doesn't take that siege creep there. Um, with the Helm of Dominator, actually, Lycan has such a strong catapult when he takes one. It's basically like one and a half catapult pushing. Um, but he keeps his Hellbear, and it's gonna die. He was a fan of that Hellbear until just then. Yeah, loyal servant, but... No more, and now there's no catapult to be had anymore either. And no serpent wards, so complexity after clearing through all of them. Pretty happy defending their tier one up here. They're smoking up the scouting with the wolves, doing a good job trying to keep track of where people are moving. However, the smoke got revealed onto the lichen, so they should realize that there's some move going on right now. Maybe, maybe Kyle didn't notice the smoke break. Ah, uh, he definitely would, but but uh, it's not. Uh, He's very tentative, yeah. He's thinking about it. He's going up high ground, Ether Shock at the shackles. He, Tanking the gank, maybe? He didn't think better of it. He's like, is this safe? I'm sure it's safe. <laughs> it's not safe. Well, it's like, I'm, I'm sure it's probably not safe for me, but if me being unsafe means that my carries are safe, then... Yeah, in a way, in a way. you Like, it's better not to be scared if you're playing a support. You always see like I'm popping the ulti, trying to go in for anything here. Rasta, however... Cannot get the, the cancel on that TP. Didn't quite have mana in time. He was slowly taking up his yeah. mana. He was just at 150 as the TP kind of went out. A little bit sad for him there. So in the meanwhile, you know, we're looking at top, we're looking at mid. Towers being pushed and pressured. Mu has been farming away pretty quietly. No oh, Tusk Snowball! No, so close. They almost cancelled the Undying, who tried to TP out, and successfully TP'd out from that gank. He had a rocket and a snowball on him. Well, Tinker's in all sorts of trouble here. Gets laser rockets out, but already dead, and Sila can't really do anything to change that. Massive kill. Massive kill to bring down. That's the first kill onto a Tinker, and look at his gold. Yeah. That is really unfortunate for him. So Super close to close buying to it. Travels. But yeah, Mu is kind of being, you know, silently farming, has a full hood now on top of his Sol Ring Arcanes. This Timber Sol Ring. almost Siler with the Maledict. Oh god. Trying uh, to bring him down. Really? Yep, they got him. A very Ooh. quick combination there. He had his creep next to him, the cask held him in place, and that's a level 4 Maledict by Z Freak. 
showing you why. Cal, you buy wards. Is he freak gonna carry you? Yeah, you fair enough. Play. Level eight and a half witch doctor. He, he pretty much solo killed him, to be honest. Limp was there, but I, I don't think he needed to be. Complexity. Level I... four Maledict onto Tide now. Cashed up right next to each other, but you don't really want right, to run into a Tide the, like the, that. They can't chase aggressively. They can't run defensively. VGJ just being held at bay by this one witch doctor. Yeah, we talked a lot about different skill builds on witch, by the way. And yeah, there was the max heal. There was the one point heal. And here's the no point heal. Zipfreak, he has... He has an urn. That's all you need for healing, right? Yeah. He doesn't care about voodoo restoration. He just wants to bounce some coconuts. Get some maledict down. Uh, the satyr here is, um, well, Yeah, it's dying. kind of AFK, which is unfortunate, because 125 gold is a lot of money. I suppose he figured that they can always cask it and it's dead anyway, but make them use it, man. Don't, don't stand there. Yeah. Don't be sleeping. The Shadow Shaman was pinging out as well. Like, dude, you're... Yeah, exactly. You're, <laughs> your sound is dying. Is dying. He, could, he could maybe even have taken over a creep faster on another lane, but he does have a centaur now. However, 125 gold like that for a, for a support, that's a large portion of your net worth. Yes. So... So I, I feel like I went into this game kind of preferring VGJ's draft. Oh, they're diving Tinker. Yeah, they maybe. are. With a homing missile. Uh, Pull down won't connect, though. Yeah, I'm sorry. But yeah, I, I came into this game after the draft kind of preferring what VGJ had to offer. They've got you know, tons of push, the pressure they have, but uh, something just feels off about it. But I, I don't feel it's them necessarily, but more the complexity of playing really well to kind of dodge these pushes and deal with the Serpent Wards very quickly. Like, Moo TPing up here to clear Serpent Wards, oh, yeah. VGJ is scared. I would say that there's definitely a little bit of fear in the way that VG Gaming are playing, and Complexity, they're really doing a great job just getting a lot done. Again, killing the Tinker huh? alone? <laughs> this is just insane. He died in Fountain, in fact. Yeah, Zip Freak, well, he got the, the Maledict, the Urn, and the uh, Death Ward on him, and he dies. Just Zip Freak playing like a god as always, but it's not just him. Everyone is getting online really nicely here, and... The, the cores are just having a fantastic time. Yeah, Mu died twice, but those were pretty early deaths. They didn't really set him back too, too much. And now you've got this big gyro farming the the haven here, the triple camp. Oh yeah, the safe spot. It's a mm. wonderful little place for gyros to sit and dream. That Top three places by. to farm, standing on that cliff right there. Yep. There's Gyro and Medusa's dream. He is as well, actually. Nice little ancient stack for himself as Chessy. The Smokeroo coming in yeah. by Vichy Gaming, but not really I connecting guess, with anyone. I guess this is another big point as well. We've not seen a Ravage yet from Yang, right? He's now yeah. level 9, closing in on 10. We have not, and we haven't seen a, a good time to use it either. Hasn't really been quite possible, but you need to give yourselves those opportunities, right? They're going for a Roshan now. I think this is realized by uh, Complexity, but they're probably prepared to give up the Aegis. They're going to scout it out with a sigil, but not much more than that going to happen. Yeah, they're pushing on all three lanes. They're farming really nicely. Giving away Roshan to a five-man group up like this doesn't feel too bad. The fact that they've managed to shut down Tinker so much, not having his blink dagger yet and so on, is really instrumental in this game. Like They, they can stay in this game even against a, a heavy push lineup and get farm enough on Gyro then they can definitely take this late. Yeah, 16 and a half minutes in. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize the Tinker was so far behind. He is. You he definitely would, like would want to see at least Blink and halfway towards Etherlands or something like that. Yeah. But uh, no, he doesn't have it. Mid and lane. likewise, Silo does not have Necrobook in he level 3 yet. being dived here. The Phantom Lancer of Limp. No defusal yet. Just treads and a Blade of Alacrity as Silo forced the shapeshift and maybe try and chase, but... Again, that's like, a defensive ulti. So, a very long time where they can't do too much. The wards are on point here from Complexity as well. Everything, I mean, I'm obviously, you know, be, being on Complexity's payroll, I may be a little <laughs> bit biased, but this is looking pretty great for them. Uh, no, it, it genuinely is. Uh, I, I, I felt like maybe I was being a little bit biased at the end of the draft, saying, you know, VGJ has this and that and that. I, I didn't like the kind of, the cut of Complexity's draft, but the way they're playing this, really has been spectacular like ju just just that move that we saw right there mid yeah forcing well, the shapeshift that the two versus five basically where complexity are kind of fearless oh, going into that the illusions even manages to not get the last on the tower but rasta could not get to the eye on the tower and that's a another big chunk of gold going the way of complexity it seems like all the little things are just panning out for them and yeah during the draft after the first three picks i believe 
everyone uh, who is a Complexity fan had a little bit of worry for them, and rightfully so. When you see, you know, Rasta, Undying, and Lycan, there is a lot of malicious intent in this, <laughs> right? Oh, the Undying is going to go down here to a cask, into Rocket, into a little bit of Rocket Barrage, and that's almost going to finish up uh, the BKB for Gyrocopter soon. He's looking quite farmed. Yeah, phase drums, Yasha, BKB, but yeah, like the pushing power, the kind of space creation for Tinker and then from Tinker as the game progresses, all looks pretty good. You, you do have this upside, though, that Shadow Shaman is reasonably well farmed. Now with a Blink Dagger up after Arcanes, you're going to have that instant initiation onto heroes like the yeah. PL. Interesting they went for that. So they need to get quick kills and pickoffs with this build. This is not really your Aghanim's pushing style build. And also, they've only managed to claim one tower in 18 minutes with this lineup. So they're not going to play a little bit more around kills. I think he has to aim to disable whatever the Lycan is focusing. They're going in like an ulti. Um, that's a tusk. Not, yeah. not the best target. And he's going to snowball and delay this for a little bit here. Well, they do get a tusk, but like you said, not the ideal target. And with the ulti committed on Lycan, you're unlikely to be able to push even a tower. He's going for a little bit of scouting here with the Necrobook at least. Going to get some D-Wards done. Sentries only. Um, but look at the lanes. The lanes are in great shape for Complexity. They pushed out everything. And they're more than capable of defending mid when Lycan doesn't have ulti. And Mu just continues silently farming on this Timber Saw, yeah. heading into Bloodstone now. And this is a hero that, you know... Once he gets his items, he knows how to play. For, for sure. sure. Like, yeah. we, we've seen Timbers get shut down early, and okay, when they don't have items, they look really lackluster. But Mu on a Timber with items, and <laughs> honestly with, what, free farm for the past maybe 10 minutes or so. The Tombstone d -word. <laughs> Sorry, it's just funny to me. Oh. They used the, the Necro book and the Tombstone to d -word the <laughs> the ward that was there. But it's farming as well. Look at that efficiency. For sure, the uh, the timber saw is going to be an issue, but I'm more concerned just that the gyrocopter and the peel alone are going to be strong enough to deal with the the tinker and the lichen later on, because they're they're ahead in farm for sure. And there's a full BKB. You know, often we talk about the gyro dealing with the summons from lichen, and then the necro three, the little warrior popping to flat cannon is always a worry for gyro, but. If you have enough oh, farm, no. though, then it's more like, oh, free money, instead yeah. of, oh, God, I'm almost dead. I admit, now it is Complexity looking to set up a fight here. 45 Ravage seconds on available. Ages. There's the Blink Hex. In comes the oh. Ravager, right, Waga, they catch them. Jesse gets his BKB off, but Limp is already very low. VTJ Thunder looking to chase on in as Kyle has kind of been left high and dry here by the rest of his team. Losing the two supports. Yang looking to maybe get in on top of Limp, but the PL... That was the fight that fish. VG needed. They are now looking like they should be able to take this mid tower. However, Timbersaw is still trying to defend. Oh, they can get Mu here as well. Tinker's TPing in. They've got the shackles from Rasta. Mu has overstepped. He definitely Limp. has. Rasta back up. I, I, I was wondering there, you know, with Serpent Wars down, all the ultimates gone, maybe VGG get a tier 2, but swinging out for a Timbersaw on top of that is just, you know, icing, cherry, scoop of ice cream. Everything on top is beautiful for them. And it also hurts quite a bit more since you just now lost your, your offlaner in this deal as well. Look at Kyle being spotted here by Ward. He's kind of dropped down an Observer Ward of his own, and that was also spotted, I think. Oh, he's just blown up. Yeah. They so. may not have seen that he warded if they're lucky enough, but he definitely added one more death. So that's four deaths in quick succession and a tower. At first, they only lost what would be two supports and the tower afterwards mm. if they played it safe. But Mu just being a little bit too far out there. And the Rasta Blink definitely coming into play here in both these engagements. Like three Blink Hexes yeah. across the fight looked yeah, really sure. good. So complexity, maybe the wind taken out of their sails a little bit there as the Gyro BKB allowed him to get back to safety but didn't give them the aggressive nature that maybe they would have liked. But definitely VGJ kind of flicked that switch and we're like, okay, Ravage time, we need to get this done. The blink up on Yang definitely helping out, moving into the pipe now, looking for these kind of game-closing items, or at least consolidate the lead that uh, it's just, they're trying to build themselves. Just keeping the zoo alive, really, from the Lycan, and uh, that's going to be really helpful for them whenever they want to try and high ground. Uh, oh, that's right. Peel. I've seen a lot of Lycans build pipe themselves, but I guess BKB yeah, this game is. You super don't necessarily important. want to build the item. It's out of necessity. If you can close the game with it, of course that can be fine. But in general, you want to go for something like BKB into Nullifier, perhaps, just so people can't force that for Growth Scepter or get away in any other way. Um, 
But he's doing a good job just dewarding with Necrobox as well on Silar. Always running around with them. However, the wards are staying alive for quite a while. Yeah, he hasn't found them. I'm saying he's he's doing a good job covering a large area with the Necrobooks, but he hasn't actually run into too many <laughs> of them. It's just been unfortunate for him. Yeah. So up at top, the Tinker Ward here nearly led to a, a grab onto Tinker, but uh, Tusk Snowball not quite fast enough. Yeah, until he has the talents, the Snowball is quite slow, but there is actually the level 20 talent, which makes it really, really fast. Since this is a position 5 Tusk, though, by the time he's level 20, the game it's is over. probably over or in a very, very strange world where snowball speed is the least that we're going to worry about. Well, Fade now with a full ether lens on top of that Blink Dagger heading into some Tranquil Boots to try and finish off his little wind lace there. Let's see what Kyle and the crew are going to do. Are they going to go for a fight somewhere? They're nice. going to throw out the casket. Was spotted immediately. Zivrik showing himself so they know that the entire smoke move was made. And again, Rasta with the oh, split fade. push. You've yeah. got, you got a TP. Uh, he's, he doesn't know that he's under a Tinker Ward. I thought, oh! I thought they knew, but... Yeah, I guess they didn't realize, or at least didn't communicate to him. Now they, he definitely didn't know. Now they definitely know. <laughs> now they definitely know, yeah. Jigs up. And oh, Z-Freak, hello. Uh, maybe goodbye, in fact. Regen yeah, is going to get picked up. Not too much damage from the Tinker, it looks like. Shapeshift has been expended here, and Z-Freak... No, extending this chase a little bit yeah, he's, further he's than dead. Creature J would have liked, but all looks fine for them. Meanwhile, on top, though, immediately Moo pounces on an opportunity to deal some split push onto this VGJ squad. Tinker, though, getting stronger and stronger, having the Aghanims, he's getting to a point where he can start defending more effectively. Well, looking at Chessie's item queue right now, Halbert queued up. Yeah, it's just a very useful item when Lycan runs in on you, right? So oh, it, he, it gives him some more utility. Is he going Sanj and Yasha and Halberd? I think he's or gonna disassemble. I think he disassembles it and goes for Manta style. Okay. That's what I'm expecting him to do. But we'll see if he decides to go for a double. I don't think the double is so good because um, that would only be valuable if you really want to maim the enemy a lot. But against a Lycan and a Tinker who... Both of them don't really run. <laughs> and then you have a Tidehunter who also just gets rid of procs. Um, there's no real reason to go for that. Okay. Well, I'll smoke now from VTJ Thunder as they have Ravage up again. And, of course, the items that we were looking at not too long ago with that pipe ready on Yang. They'll move up onto the oh, high ground, gyro. scouting of the walls, the blink, and the hex. In comes Fade onto the gyro. Chessie is allowed to get his BKB off thanks to Moose Yules. But look at that, the troll trap caps Chessie in. And now Silent chasing forward. They need to get a few oh, more swipes in. The Rolf is hungry and he will be sated as the Ravage catches two on the back. Moo and Z Freak. They're trying to get in here with the damage of the Maledict, the Death Ward as well. Beautiful but Moo, Maledict. He's catching both the tide. himself away. But look at the damage they're dropping so low. Down goes Silar and Moo. He wants blood. It tasted it in the water, but Tinker TP's out. Yang is going to try and sprint away as well in the back end. Tusk is punching up the Undying, but a two for two <laughs> trade off so far. Looks like it might in the just end, end with I the Undying. Oh. Yeah, he's going to go down. There are some Necrobooks still to be farmed here as well if someone wants them, but they're trying to catch Tinker first. Not quite going to be able to reach him, I believe. Beautiful cancel there with the Yule Scepter. That was a big save. Um, of course, Lycan still gets the rundown onto the Gyrocopter. So uh, that was a big kill for them. But Zip Freak again, I mean, time and time again, we see him just making the plays. He's going to go down there, perhaps, though, as Tinker decides to go aggressive. He gets to the shrine and in the snowball. Maybe Tinker's the one who oh, overstepped oh, now. Oh, oh, the outplays from complexity. Yeah. Tinker, Kyle. he's going to try and TP out, but he's already dead. Moo gets the kill. It was a risky play to go for the Witch Doctor there. And you could definitely say that he got baited by Zip Freak, but. Yep. It's just so risky to go for a play like that against a Tusk. I, th I think he got baited by his team a little bit as well. There was the Necro Archer chasing and a Catapult chasing Witch Doctor and they purge the Witch Doctor and they're chasing and they're chasing. Tinker TP's in. He's like, I'm going to get this kill. I'm going to no, get this kill. I'll get it. And then there's and then a Spirit no. Vessel, four staff from Witch Doctor, the Snowball saved from Tusk. And Tinker just... And now it's gets. I mean, Undying was like spam pinging the Witch Doctor as well. Just like, go in, go get, get the kill. Get and the now it's Complexity who are going for the Roche. They themselves, the wolves are scouting it, but it's a little bit too late. I don't think they can reach this in time. Blinking Fade in, is in. And he it. Oh, the Rasta! Okay! Oh, Into the pit, God. and he's probably gonna die a second that time. Is so here, worth. But that's super worth it. Well done by Fade. Wow, he he made that ether lens work, you know, <laughs> blinking from far away.
He has come to snatch that ages. And that is uh, momentum dampening. That is so wild, though, to go for that play even as a Rasta. <laughs> crazy, oh, crazy dearie, fool. Mate. Well, that, there we have it. Imagine so if he failed and they had Aegis and he would be dead like this. This would be horrible. That would be tier 3, maybe Rax. There's no, there's no glyph here for VGJ Thunder. Yules immediately. Moo catches Tinker. Kalma has to run away from this with a cooldown landing. The laser doesn't do a massive amount. Kyle is in. He has to get away. Now the Lycan arrives, chasing down Chessie. They need to get some kind of trap or stun, but Chessie's BKB is working out wonders. In the back end, they have killed off Kyle, but Chessie's BKB is done. The damage from Moo. Silo's nearly dead the yule scepter might just finish him off as he drops to the ground and dies to the chain yeah meanwhile kyle snowballing all the way into the fountain but the chase is now over yet they're gonna chase after his timber saw oh it's the back tinker. In. fade respecting the peel a little bit there doesn't want to go in for the shackles because he's scared the peel is just gonna straight up kill him uh, and now we're looking at timber saw with 20 bloodstone charges yeah he got no, out he got out with a lot of bloodstone charges and peel also got out so that's pretty big the Gyrocopter has died a bit, but he did go for the uh, disassemble into Halberd, so he's yeah. kind of taking more of the utility core uh, position here, and they're looking for PL and uh, PL and Timber to be a big damage dealers. And he's yeah. going for the uh, the Crimson Guard on Timber. I really like that, because one big thing that is uh, useful about this is you can actually defend your high ground against the push. Oh yeah, because you can buildings with the damage block. Exactly, so you block up a ton of the damage from the Lycan Wolves. It's really, really useful. It's really nice. What did I see just now as well? There was something that I saw. <laughs> where, where? You saw something? I saw something. What did you spot? I don't know. Well, AC is coming for the Lycan. As we do have that Aghanims now on Tinker. Dagon is being built up. Maybe they, maybe they just changed it. I mean, Aghanims is coming for Witch Doctor as well. You mentioned oh, that yeah. uh, at the end of the draft. Uh, oh, yeah. he's <laughs> He really enjoys having it. And very quickly. He's almost got his... Uh, you know, his level 18 as well, he's going to get it down here with one creep dying. And uh, we've seen him make so many plays with very little items. The more items he gives a freak, the more he scales, you know. Like, he's yeah. going to be able to pull out some big plays. Solo killing the Lycan, solo killing the the Tinker. He's already done these things. What can he be capable of doing with an Aghanims in his hands? Everything. Everything. So we'll kill the enemy team. Uh, the PL had, uh, still has cheese and nearly has blink. I think it's the cheese that I was looking at that he had in his backpack. Oh, so yeah. it was you know, the Aegis stolen, of course, by the Rasta, but PL still holds on to that secondary item. As That's complexity. True. Go in for a movement towards the middle lane. Ward up again to get some vision down over this VGJ side, but they hold the high ground here. Not quite under Dire Vision just yet. Cuts out. They see them though, just so before. they completely spotted out the smoke that's coming up. They're now gonna group up somewhere and just protect themselves. Oh no, the wolves scouted out the Witch Doctor. He tried to smoke break on the high ground and be ready to force that away. Didn't really think about the wolves though, coming first. So blink hex by Rasta, a quick kill. And the rest of Complexity get the hell out. Yeah. Blink TP from Limp. Leaves his illusions here to try and deal with the Lycan army. Actually clears the Helm creep. So Silo will have to refresh that one, but immediately up towards top to continue farming here. Complexity still with the entirety of their bot lane. Tier 1 and Tier 2 still standing down here. VGJ, uh, maybe a chip on their shoulder, like, we, we, should, we should probably have taken this tower a long time ago. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we're half an hour in, and a Tier 1 is standing against a Lycan undying Rasta. Um, so definitely something went wrong for them here, but Complexity, they've been playing playing really solid and they're even looking to try and defend this. Probably not going to save the tower, but maybe they can get some kills. Uh, they're sitting around. I don't think they're going in though. Limp looking for the sideswipe, maybe. Yeah, he has an Invis rune. Has to be careful about Necrobook just being used or something. Oh, throws a lance in. Siler. Gets a bit of his mana burnt down, but Tinker has arrived, lays down the layers of March. Uh, this complexity don't really want to be fighting into this, but they're trying to oh fight past God. it. Trying yes. to run through the March is so hard. <laughs> Kyle losing half his HP. Silar pops his ulti at the Blink Ravage. Oh God, they've caught the big one. Down goes Chessie before his BKB Z Freak chased as well. One by one, complexity fall. There's Kyle, a bit of a chase in the southern side, here. but yeah, the snowball from Tusk not going to give him any chance of survival. As the PL and Timber, it's been clutch. Uh, chasing the Raster, I guess. It's been clutch three times in a row now. I think the Tidehunter and Ravage use has been really on point. 
He has the blink and four staff, so allowing him to get in position really quickly. And uh, this is this is very massive for them. The fact that they have so good follow up. The Lycan is of course immediately there whenever you ravage. The blink from Rasta is quick to follow up. The blink from Tinker. So they combine really nicely. And even though Mu feels and prob oh, probably is close trying. to unkillable, he's struggling to do damage. Now bringing Yang low, Sila pops Zulti to turn and fight. They're going back into this. Mu being focused here by Sila. I'm not sure if that's the, the real option he wants to go for, but the Aghanim's laser from Tinker will arrive and send Complexity packing back to their base. And it's no longer a big thing. By the way, there's a gem on that staircase. I wonder if he saw it. He just ran straight past it on Lycan. But no, he didn't see it. Or did he? No. <laughs> yes, he has no clue. Nobody knows. Yeah, I don't think either team has any idea that that gem is there, so it'll be interesting to see if anyone finds this precious pearl on the staircase. I mean, dire side advantage, right? <laughs> Definitely. That's, that's where the old Roshan yeah. used to be. Is that gem an indicator? Can we get a count on how many stairs are pointing south or north? <laughs> <laughs> how many uh, low ground ne uh, neutral jungle camps the Radiant has and how many high ground ones the Dire has? Exactly. The important stats that matter. So, right now they're just waiting up their Ravage again on the side of VGJ. Uh, VGJ. And uh, there we go. Come on, see it, Jesse! It's right there, man! Oh, my boy! Jesse knows it. Go on, Z-Freak. That's like, yours. you guys leave it here? Kyle, was this you? <laughs> Kyle was, like, was this you? Kyle is like, <laughs> nope. Don't know what you're talking about, sir. I've got no idea, mate. I did not die right there. Owned the by good thing is, he was surrounded by Lycan Wolves and Necrobooks and everything. So when he died, they probably simply shards. didn't see it. It does make a sound when it drops, though. Yeah. And and they can check his inventory before he dies. I, I'm pretty sure his last shards were like directly on top of the. That's true. Well. It was probably sharded it was, above it. Sharded it above, you know, they're yeah. like, ah, it's gone, guys. Yeah, it's not there anymore. <laughs> so someone, what, someone what? here, a gem? No, <laughs> no. It's all in your imagination. Stop, stop taking LSD. That's, I don't know what's going on in your head. It's, it's the ice. <laughs> Twenty-five seconds until the fastest Roche respawn, as complexity look to get. These wards refreshed over on the Radiant side of the map. VGJ doing a similar thing up towards the top ward across to the shrine. Yeah, Give the, some vision of this next Roshan fight. They tried all oh, this wraparound this here. Very interesting from Complexity. Swinging in deep. No detection? Hey oh, he's still dead. Doesn't matter. Glimmered but dead. Glimmered but dead. And Roshan, our survey says 1 minute 50. Yeah, and Rasta, meanwhile, got brought down by uh, Limp as well. He did have the Observer Ward helping him. And the chase here might not be over. Tide Link has to find his way out of this. He can Maledict is a scary thing for you, sir. That is a big death ward. Oh, oh god, look at that! God, it hurts. <laughs> he died quickly. Where'd he go? Yeah, I mean, he was simply just dead. Witch Doctor nearly has agonims as well. Yeah, that's a large amount of money as well going. Oh, Silo, no, not like this. Caught by the Yules, BKBs and Ultis. But he this is not where you want to be as a Lycan. He is real quick, but yeah, the Yule Scepter is on cooldown for Timberstall. Elsie would probably try and make a Yule's play. Doesn't really matter, though. The Lycan ulti has so long duration. Move. Even picked the increased duration talent, so he can basically ulti all, all the time. Mu is just going in. No fear whatsoever from this lad. Yeah, they got so many kills recently, so they're in a great spot to just push here. They have a Witch Hunter heal to try and prevent everyone from going too low. Big lasers from the Tinker trying to hold them back, but the tier 3 has fallen as the Shackles long range there as the Force Staff pushes Mu a little bit away from danger, but Complexity, they retreat, they extract, disengage from that push as they've cleared the tier 3 now. Shrines, Roshan, exactly. warding. A lot of things are opening up, and the map is really in the in the control of Complexity. I like that Chessie is going back for some damage now, building into that MKB next. Good because he was going for more of a utilitarian, you know, approach here. Going for the Halberd, the BKB, mostly just providing CC for his team. But now gonna go back and get some, some more damage output as well. I don't care about anything in this game anymore apart from which Dr. Ags. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see a big team fight, and then I want to see how Zip Freak is going to play around the Ravage, because that's one of the hard things. Oh, yeah. You can't really commit the Death Ward until the Ravage has been expended. So, has to be really wise about his positioning. That's why the Force Staff is coming into play. Um, he can kind of sit in the outskirts of the fight, Force Staff in, Cask, Maledict, and Ulti. And that's a, a very scary threat. 
Meanwhile, though, same thing can be said over on the side of uh, VGJ Thunder. They have this uh, long-range initiation by Shadow Shaman with the Etherlands and Cast Range talents. He's able to operate from so far away. If he can find the targets to jump on, but Roshan alive. Diarobs scouting out little bits here and there of VGJ, but they did move away to get the smoke off. The trouble is, Phantom Lance is doing a great job split pushing, but now he's cutting in towards mid, sees the Tinker, thinks about going in, throws a single Lance. Huh? Just VGJ letting still him know. Smoked Tagging up him. nearby. Smoke from Yang does pop as Limp jumps across the river. Like an, like an ulti. Now in jumping with the Ravage, catching onto two. The shackle's already there, and down goes Chessy and Kyle. Mu has got in. Oh God, One Mu. versus five. Self fuels up, looking for maybe a timber chain. He does have the long range talent, and away He's he goes. Taking so much damage. He is getting a little bit of distance here. So <laughs> another timber chain off the map. Mu is away from everybody, and VTG are like, okay, dude. That Cal escape. Calm down. <laughs> Lycan is going to have to be a little bit faster than that to keep up. Blink Lycan. Yeah, exactly. I don't even think that would matter. Give him twice the movement speed and then maybe. Well, looks like it will secure Roshan for VGJ at least. But then you look at Limp pressuring bot. Tinker has to come and address the Phantom Lancer issues while Zfrix stays alive with Gem. This is massive though, because this is the refresher Roshan. So getting this towards the Tidehunter, oh boy. obviously a big deal. And the Aegis, no one, no one wants that, or... Siler! <laughs> Siler! No, Tinker? Tinker. Oh, Tinker. Tinker. Yeah, okay. that's probably smart, putting it over on the Tinker. He is being focused quite a bit, and Siler is pretty hard to kill anyway, on this uh, AC BKV Lycan. Getting closer to his level 25, by the way. Interested to see, he's probably gonna take the extra wolves. The three extra wolves, I mean, it's such a strong army. And especially with the aura build that he has. Yeah. That AC really does add up for all of those little wolvies. So Mjolnir next for the Lycan, it looks like. Lots of damage sources, a way to deal with the PL illusions. But you're looking at this Phantom Lancer now building into a nullifier again. We're going to see this item. Uh, any particular hero uh, outside of Tinker, of course, you know, uh, of course the PL. Yeah, actually, so the Undying is actually a good target to use it on because he has two different survival tools right now, the Glimmer Cape along with the Ghost Scepter. Glimmer can actually be purged, same as the Ghost Scepter. And keep in mind, you can purge your Ghost Scepter and the Ghost Scepter can't be used after. So it doesn't matter if he uses it before or after Ghost is expended. You can just click your Null Fire and right-click away. Nice. It's a lovely item. Very nice. Um, it's uh, actually the counter of the Scepters in general. Like, Yule Scepter on the Rasta, same thing there. You can easily just kill him, use it before or after he Yule Scepters. Doesn't matter. The only counterplay, I guess, is to Yule Scepter the Peel himself. <laughs> get him out of the fight. Yeah. Get him away from me. Or hex him in, you know, and getting it a distance away, but... Definitely gonna be a scary item once he has it. There, there is the hex. Like you mentioned it as the Tinker buys it up. Mm -hmm. So we now have Etherlands, Ags, Hex, Shivers Guard all up on the Tinker. He has a lot of items to rotate right now, and not too many inventory slots. That's the only downside about this uh, Aegis. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of taking, you know, valuable space in his inventory. But he swaps around a little bit, decides that the uh, Etherlands is gonna be on holds, and he keeps the Aghanims just because he needs that AoE clear with the laser getting damage onto everyone. It is very nice. Things slow down for now. We're still looking at the kind of farm cycle. The first couple of minutes of that Aegis, you know, you, you've got the fear that Complexity have that a push is coming, so they're just trying to reset lanes, keep them pushed out across the river, while VGJ, you know, look to just get that one little advantage where they can get two lanes across, which it looks like they're accomplishing mid and top. What's well, the fear of, you know, elimination game? You feel the pressure that they're in lower bracket here, so we see both teams playing maybe a little bit more careful than you would expect. I do believe that VG should try and force something to happen, and I honestly wish that they would have um, tried more to deward with this gem before going, because they're trying to move out now, but everything has been spotted quite early, and uh, of course Complexity not looking like they're about to get caught out by anything here. Hiding in the base. They're definitely stuck in their base though. They're, they're not on the map and doing stuff right now. I think Timber should be top, but he's a little bit scared to be there. Well, they got the scan anyway. Complexity know that there are heroes up on this high ground. They need a ward out in this area. Being pinged out here by VGJ, but there is nothing up on that little hilltop. Complexity, like you said, stuck in their base, thinking 
Rasta, the links up there. Make sure there's no wards. Just uh, securing the vision around the area. But they have not found the the other... <laughs> the other uh, wards, the deep wards that saw this movement so yeah. early. I was wondering if Silo was okay there. He's kind of stood in the same spot for the last 30 seconds. Just Maybe. Just just thinking, know. waiting. Checking meditating, Facebook. Meditating. Checking Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely right. <laughs> Meta. <laughs> Making sure the stream's all right. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> oh, oh God. D oh, wow. Don't allow them to Facebook. Wait, who has the shard then? Serpent Ward Ras? Wait. No, he has it. On Tide. Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. Tide has the refresher and he has the shard as well. So it's going to be uh, Triple Ravage potentially coming out in one fight. And he has the cheese, so he can easily afford the mana as well. It's going to be interesting. Triple Ravage. And we've, we've seen him... With one Ravage and what he can do. One, Yeah, one Ravage. The timing, the placement, jumping like down the throat of Chessy whenever he can to make sure that he gets it before the BKB's popped. I think the big thing to look out for with these Triple Ravages... They, oh, there's an Arcane Rune too. Dear God, you guys got to go fight with that. Tinker! Uh, I think the, uh, you won't have it on the Ravage. Tinker's oh, thinking about uh, it. He's like. not taking it? <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on, Tide. Yeah, I guess it's tankers. So they want it on the tanker. I, it's still big. The reduced mana cost for tanker is yeah. insane. Especially um, at this stage, you get another like three cycles out of your spells or something insane. It is true. It, it makes them stronger for this fight, whereas putting it on Tide would just make sure you have the next big fight with a refresher uh, coming up sooner. Uh, okay, Aegis does time out, but I don't think that changes the fact that you want to go right around now. But they're going to be patient for now. Waiting for a slip up here from complexity, potentially. But Kyle has ranked and ordered all of his uh, all of his nice little comrades there to stay in base. One thing Don't worth mentioning, around. by the way, is that r right now, of course, complexity are very much on the back foot. But uh, I just want to mention a small detail that Undying actually got level 20. And he has the plus three tombstone attacks talent. Ooh. Now, that one is really annoying. It takes 11 attacks to destroy the tombstone. With a tombstone on and, death as well, right? And tombstone on death. And he has the soul rip to heal. Or oh, Moo just <laughs> jumping in here. He wants he to kill Fade. Going. Serpent wards are thrown in with a tombstone as well. Chessie tries to focus it down, ravages? but there are the extra attacks that he needs to get in. The cooldown's not doing anything. Chessie, oh, I don't know how he healed himself up there, but he's got himself a bit of time. But uh, Ravage not connecting fast enough to save the Tinker Asylum. Will Rip apart complexity. Second Ravage arrives. No time for a third. No mana for a third. As I'll bring down Kyle as well. The buybacks flow from complexity now as VGJ win a team fight, but it wasn't that convincing. Yeah, it was not super convincing, but they didn't expand the refresher shard, right? Yeah, so they true. still hold on to that. Didn't expand the cheese either. They bought back on Tinker. That is the big damage, but likewise, they forced the buyback on the PL, and Tusk is still dead for a little while. Don't think Tusk is uh, meaningful enough, sorry Kyle, that uh, VG are going to push here. It's simply too too small of a kill to really care about forcing buyback or anything like that. Well, complexity hold the line still. But what what was that from Chessy? Because he suddenly jumped up from like... I, I don't understand the, the general aggression. Well, Moo just dove in, super angry. I think it was frustration from sitting in base for five minutes in a row, and probably the call was made that we gotta go, we gotta fight them right now, catch them, because they're not pushing, so we're gonna find someone who's alone and kill him. And they just dove in mid and gave it their best shot, you know. But it was a little bit crazy. Oh, was Chessy holding an old cheese? Uh, oh yeah. I think he was. Yeah, okay. So that, that's, that's, that's what it was. I've just been like milling over in my head, like how did he heal himself up in that fight? Well. Uh, there was also the Timbersaw dying, right? I believe he died. Yeah, he d he died and he had a ton of bloodstone charges, so it could have been that. Does that still heal? Mm, yes, doesn't it? They've changed oh, bloodstone. Oh, the they actually oh yeah, they actually removed that entirely, I guess. That's true. My Poor bad. bloodstone. So many changes. Sorry. <laughs> Not easy to keep up. Oh, it's the longest time I still thought that you could like. Uh, gain experience and see the spot where you died with oh, yeah. stone. They changed that years ago and I'm like, uh, uh okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part about totally it. Too. Yeah, same. That was like the best bit. Buy it to stay high in level <laughs> even though you feed. Yeah, exactly. I don't care charges, I only care <laughs> if I die I get experience so, from the fight. 
So we need to pay attention in the next fight to what Rasta is going to be doing in the fight. Because he has that three seconds extra duration on his shackles. If Ooh. he doesn't get stopped, he can do some tremendous damage. With that eight second duration, ten second cooldown, he has to be focused. Right? So his initiation point in the fight is very important. So he, he could potentially perma... Just Pretty much. Chain stun the Timber Soul while the rest of his team focuses yeah. PL and Gyro, for instance. Yeah, he he definitely uh, pretty much can. If he hexes and then towards the well, shackles, then hexes, and then towards the end of it, shackles again. Yeah. Then he will have the hex just barely again. And then, you know, obviously there's one more shackle and that's how it goes. Feels like a pretty quick Roshan. Uh, I, I mean, like the cycle of it, a fast spawn on Roshan here for VGJ mm -hmm. to come in and take complexity. They now realize throwing shards and in this there. This is going to be a second refresher shard. Oh Jesus! You're right. When the, you're when you're right, you're right. There's not not very often that you no. see. And this is probably going to be the Rasta claiming this one. So you're going to have double, ra oh well, triple ravage potentially, double Rasta ward drops. This is just looking right. scary, Keeping man. tabs on this is getting insane. So we have Cheese mm -hmm. and Refresher Shard and Refresher Orb on Yang. We have Refresher Shard, like you're saying, on the Shadow Shaman. Another Cheese on Ao, and then... Uh... Yeah, they're, they're very healthy in their team. They've got a lot of things going for them. And uh, this is quite the difficult fight to take when you consider that there's no buyback on the PL, and he's standing pretty far out. He might be spotted. Oh, he's going on the Tinker. Oh, he's in Nullifier, but the Aegis is here for Karma. If he needs it, he's going to drop there, sure, but he'll have a second life. And now Jesse with no BKB has to try and turn oh, and run. God. The Death Ward up on the high ground. Z-Freak trying to get the damage done. The bounce oh, is coming no. out. The Ravagers arrive. Yang with the first, now the second. The triple. Look for the third. Yang gets them all. And Complexity, this will be your downfall. The buybacks will come, but it's all too little too late. I want to get off Mr. Tide's crazy ride. <laughs> That is insane, man. He gets such a good Ravage to lead. And I'm sure the moment he gets the first Ravage there, I'm going more. Big <laughs> smile on his face because he knows he can chain stun that for days. Oh my god. Dead PL, 100 seconds. Nice. Gyro buys back with the Timber to come and defend. But Serpent Wars. Oh, they're going. The oh, Shackle there. is there. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be there for a long time. Chain stunned into oblivion. Yule Scepter will keep him alive for a tiny, tiny little bit, but dead without buyback and dead complexity. Dropping game number one here, wow. it feels like. I don't see a way out there. Defending and holding on for now. The tower has backdoor regen, but not I mean, any they're longer. They're casually munching on some cheese after these fights, and they're going for a throne. They know there's no way they can even defend here. They're gonna go and buy a Desolator or something? Yeah, Kyle's having the talk... Vladimir's, Vladimir's is being bought by Undying. Kyle's having the talk with his team about the next game. Oh, yeah. Thinking about game number two. And Probably how having a talk with his team series. about this game too. Yeah. But... A really nice game, honestly. We saw both teams playing their lineup, playing their draft and executing. Maybe a bit of hesitation from both teams meant that things didn't go as planned from start to finish. There was definitely a point of hesitation, but I want to give MVP vote here to Yang, and uh, obviously on the side of of complexity, I think that Zipfreak played insane. But Yang was the game decider. He had only perfect ravages, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, every single ravage caught multiple opponents that very quickly sub subsequently died. And you know the patience, the discipline from VGJ to just wait, not stress about going high ground, but instead realizing that okay. If they're not coming out, we can just take Roche one more time, get the double wards and the double traps. Like, oh my god, it's this huge. I, f I feel kind of bad, you know, Tide hit level 9 and I was like, have, have we seen a Ravage yet? We've, mm. not, we've not really. And then At first, fr yeah. From that point onwards, he was absolutely stellar on the Tide Hunter. But that is game number one in the books there for VGJ Thunder taking the lead over Complexity. We've got more chances though, best of three. So we'll come back in a little bit with the rest of this series. Go grab yourselves a snack or something because more great Dota action coming up in just a touch.